Hey guys, Nurse Alyssa here. Um, so I just wanted to do an updated video of how and when to use Bactograss. Now I have another video um, of how to use Bactograss, but it was more um, of like when to use it and why you would be using it in contraindications. So this one, I'm actually gonna show you how to use the actual patch. Um, and then it does have the other part of when to use it and when not to use it um, also in there, okay? So on this slide, I'm just gonna go uh, step by step of what you would do. And then in the next slide, I'll actually show you and demonstrate how to use the back grass. Um, so first you're going to select the correct size. Now um, these, they come as uh, 10 by 10. So um, the packaging, this is this is the packaging it comes in um, so it comes as a 10 by 10 and it can be cut so um, you would just cut it to uh, fit the size um, so you're going to use gloves forceps um, and there is a protective um, layering on each side of the mesh um, and you would just layer it one single layer over the wound so this is not for deep wounds this is for more of a surface wound um, and then you're going to apply a second absorbent layer. So either, um, some just sterile gauze or like a mesor pad, um, if it's, if it's really a lot of exudate. Um, and also, so if, if the mesh is stuck on the wound, when you go to take it off, you want to make sure that you pour some saline on it to loosen it up. So you just pour it on, um, it'll kind of beat off, but some does go in. Uh, you can lift the edges and just pour the saline, um, and then gently pull it off because you don't want to wreck any of that fresh new skin there. Okay, so we're going to pretend this is the wound here. Okay, so where the red is. So we would want to collect all of our supplies. So we need to clean the wound. I have saline. Okay, um, most of the time, as long as we're not using a silver product, we use saline. Um, we have to use water uh, with a silver product. Um, we have our sterile gauze. We have our forceps, our scissors, our non-sterile gauze uh, just to collect the water while we uh, flush the wound. Um, and I always like to have an extra uh, alcohol swab uh, just in case I accidentally touch anything with the sterile um, forceps or scissors. And of course, gloves. So the first thing you wanna do is wash your hands, either wash them or hand sanitizer. Okay. And then you're going to put on your gloves. Now this is uh, just clean gloves, not sterile. Put on your gloves. Okay. And um, next you are going to wash your wound. So you take the saline, you take your gauze, and you rinse the whole bottle of saline. Okay. So sometimes you want to um, have the patient have a towel if you're in a community setting or have lots of gauze. Um, okay. So then you just put through the whole saline bottle. Okay. When that's done, you have it like this. You can use a sterile gauze uh, to wipe around it, uh, just any excess um, sterile uh, saline. Okay, and then you're going to use your back to grass. Okay, so you open it. Now, if you're in a community setting, you are allowed to reuse a package. Now, you would just have to uh, tape it up so nothing gets into it. Uh, use your discretion um, with that though. Okay, so I can see the wound size here. This is the patch here. Okay, so I'm going to use about a quarter of a patch. Okay, so I'm going to cut it. Now you can touch the outside of this patch because it does have a protective layer on it with your gloves. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And then you have a protective, you have two protective layers on it. Okay, so you can just peel it back. Okay, this has nothing on it. Now we have the mesh on here. 
and you also have another protective layering, okay, like that. Okay, so here you just want to take this off and cover your wound. Okay, just like that. So now the wound is covered with the mesh. Okay, you can see the mesh on there. Okay, and then you are going to put on your cover dressing. Um, so like I said earlier, um, depending on exudate, you can use whatever type of cover dressing that you think is appropriate. Um, I'm just going to use sterile gauze. Okay, so I open up the package of sterile gauze. I take my tape. Okay, and I would put it over the wound. Okay, and that's how you use Bactagrass. Um, keep watching and I'll show you all the um, contraindications when you should be using Bactagrass. Uh, so keep watching, okay? So back to grass is a it's a mesh dressing that you put over top of the wound and it can go on to the peri wound. It won't hurt the peri wound. Um, but like I said before, you do want to cut it um, to fit just slightly over the edges of the wound. Um, and so this mesh, it allows uh, your viscous exudate to go through the mesh into your cover dressing. So whether that be sterile gauze, just covered in tape, um, or whatever cover dressing you're actually using. So the antimicrobial in Bactagrass is chlorhexidine. So um, it does, it is a, effective against a wide range of gram positive and gram negative, um, and that does include MRSA. Um, so the chlorhexidine in the Bactagrass does have a low tissue toxicity, which is good because um, you, you'd rather stay on the low spectrum of the toxicity scale. Um, and it's not affected by serum or blood. The Bactagrass is used for wounds with local infection um, or to prevent infection um, in an area that might get contaminated uh, quite frequently. Um, so now we're going to talk about different wounds um, that this is a great choice for. So it's great for minor burns and scalds, lacerations, abrasions, and other skin loss wounds, leg ulcers, donor sites, so if they have a skin graft. So Bactagrass should not be used on more than 10% of your body area. Uh, dermatitis, contact sensitivity, or photosensitivity um, has occurred, but it's very rare. Uh, and anaphylactics and allergies to chlorhexidine has been noted. Um, so if somebody has a chlorhexidine allergy, you would not want to use Bactagrass on them. So just a review of when to use Bactagrass. Um, so if you have a local infection, um, if you have a stalled uh, wound, so it's not progressing through normal stages of healing, and, or if they're at risk of infection, so it's a high, high risk con contamination area. So I uh, did put a link in, in the description below um, if you want to learn how to determine if it's a local infection or a deep spreading infection that would need uh, antibiotics um, because we all know that topical um, antibiotics such as uh, the Bactagrass, it's only going to go about three millimeters uh, for a local infection. So if you want to learn the difference um, and how to recognize those differences quickly, um, just check the, the description below and it will bring you uh, to that next video. If you liked this video, please hit the subscribe button um, so you can see all of my other videos. Thanks. Have a wonderful day.